दिस वीडियो इज प्रिपेयर बाय आव्या क्लासेस प्लीज सब्सक्राइब द चैनल रेज योर डाउट एंड वॉच द वीडियो फॉर श्योर सक्सेस इन जेई एम सनीट नाउ विल डिस्कस एन इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक ऑफ फिजिक्स इट इज फ्रिक्शन सो वॉट इज एक्जैक्टली फ्रिक्शन so if i place a object on a table and if i push this object or pull this object then initially the resistance comes in picture and this object will not move if a small force is applied it can be understood by using the free body diagram which is shown here so if you see the free body diagram of this object then a gravitational force mg will act in downward direction as this book is in rest so table will apply a vertical force and this force is reaction force or the or the normal force so basically the force of gravity mg is cancelled by the normal reaction of the table it is shown here in the figure now if we apply a external force horizontally on this body or this body is being pulled by this horizontal force f then if you see this force i have denoted by a capital f then initially this force is small so we also see in our day to day life that when a small force is applied on a object placed on the table then the object will not move at all why this is because of the friction so basically when whenever we pull the object a frictional force comes in the picture which just resists the motion of this object and usually we denote it by a small f so a small f is the frictional force here so clearly in this case the frictional force comes in the picture as the initially the body does not move because some forces equal to external force opposes the motion of this box this this force which opposes the motion of box it is called as frictional force and denoted by fs and it is important to note the direction of this frictional force the direction of this frictional force is always opposite to the applied force in fact whenever there is a chance of relative motion or the or the object attempt to move the frictional force will develop and it just opposes the relative motion of the object or the direction of intended motion of this object so it is written here that this frictional force fs parallel to the surface of the body in contact with the table and opposite to the direction of intended motion so two things here is important that first thing is the frictional force is parallel to the surface so if i change the surface like if i change the surface to a inclined surface then again the direction of frictional force will be along this surface if the object will tend to move then the direction of frictional force is along the surface or the parallel to the surface and opposite to the direction of intended motion so basically frictional force always tries to nullify the relative motion between two contacts so how this force is developed this force is developed due to bonding between a body on a surface so if a object is placed on a surface then you may see that the molecular bonding between body and the surface and it is shown here if you enlarge this point then you will see that these two surface make a bonding with each other these two fit the groups of each other and because of this bonding they initially resist the relative motion between these two objects now we will discuss an important topic of physics it is friction so what is exactly friction so if i place a object on a table and if i push this object or pull this object then initially the resistance comes in picture and this object will not move if a small force is applied it can be understood by using the free body diagram which is shown here so if you see the free body diagram of this object then a gravitational force mg will act in downward direction as this book is in rest so table will apply a vertical force and this force is reaction force or the or the normal force 
so basically the force of gravity mg is cancelled by the normal reaction of the table it is shown here in the figure now if we apply a external force horizontally on this body or this body is being pulled by this horizontal force f then if you see this force i have denoted by a capital f then initially this force is small so we also see in our day to day life that when a small force is applied on an object placed on the table then the object will not move at all why this is because of the friction so basically when whenever we pull the object a frictional force comes in the picture which just resists the motion of this object and usually we denote it by a small f so a small f is a frictional force here so clearly in this case the frictional force comes in the picture as the initially the body does not move because some forces equal to external force opposes the motion of this box this this force which opposes the motion of box it is called as frictional force and denoted by fs and it is important to note the direction of this frictional force the direction of this frictional force is always opposite to the applied force in fact whenever there is a chance of relative motion or the or the object attempt to move the frictional force will develop and it just opposes the relative motion of the object or the direction of intended motion of this object so it is written here that this frictional force f is parallel to the surface of the body in contact with the table and opposite to the direction of intended motion so two things here is important that first thing is the frictional force is parallel to the surface so if i change the surface like if i change the surface to a inclined surface then again the direction of frictional force will be along this surface if the object will tend to move then the direction of frictional force is along the surface or the parallel to the surface and opposite to the direction of intended motion so basically frictional force always tries to nullify the relative motion between two contexts so how this force is developed this force is developed due to bonding between a body on a surface so if a object is placed on a surface then you may see that the molecular bonding between body and the surface and it is shown here if you enlarge this point then you will see that these two surface make a bonding with each other these two fit the groups of each other and because of this bonding they initially resist the relative motion between these two object so this is the basic concept of friction now what are different types of friction so we uh, so we will first study what are different types of friction first is the static friction so what is meant by static friction a frictional force which is developed when the object actually does not move is called as a static friction so it is written here the opposing forces that come into play when one body tends to move over the surface of another but the actual motion has not yet started is called the static friction so as this word static means static means the thing which is in rest or the thing which is not moving so actual motion has not started started but the opposing force that is the frictional force comes in the picture which wants to nullify the force or the external force applied on the body so it is shown here a object is placed on the surface and a external force p is applied you may see that although the object is not moving but some frictional force has been developed and we call this frictional force as a static friction so basically the the static friction does not exist by itself it produces when the object is in rest and some force p is applied to the object so this static friction is equal to the applied force so clearly suppose that we are uh, 
applying a force equal to 1 newton and the maximum static friction can produce this body in this scenario is 10 newton then the fric then the static frictional force which will develop equal to 1 newton so clearly it is written here if applied force is p and the body remains at rest then static friction f is equal to p Second thing is that if a body is at rest and no pulling force is acting on it, then force of friction on it is zero. So it will not uh, it will not be uh, exist by itself. It depends on the external force. So if no external force will be there, force of friction will be zero. And static friction that's why is called as a self-adjusting force because it changes in accordance with the applied force. Now we will see what is the value of this x this static friction. So it is written here that static friction is equal to F external for F external is less than and equal to mu s n. So what is this mu s n? Mu s n is basically the val maximum value of a static friction. So we will see later on that mu s is the coefficient of friction and n is the normal reaction. So basically if an object is placed on a table then as per this figure you may see that n is equal to mg and the maximum value of a static friction will be equal to mu s into n. So I change the normal force then the value of a static friction also changes like if I place this object in a lift and this lift is moving upward with an acceleration a then we have already learned in the law of motion that if a lift moves uh, with a acceleration a then the normal reaction will be changed by n is equal to m into z plus a so clearly the value of normal reaction has been changed here and in this case the frictional force will be changed equal to mu s into n so the new frictional force is equal to mu s into n and that is equal to mu s into m into g plus a if we increase the external applied force then the value of a static friction can reach up to a maximum value which is called as a limiting friction and it is written here that on increasing external force the static frictional force also increases if the applied force exceeds a certain value the body will start moving and we have seen this in our day to day life like if we start increasing the force the object will ultimately move on that is the frictional force can act up to a certain maximum value and this certain maximum value is called as a limiting friction so this maximum value of a static friction up to which body does not move is called as the limiting friction and the value of this limiting friction is equal to mu s into n where mu s is the coefficient of friction s stand for static limiting the value of limiting friction depends upon the normal reaction between these between the two surfaces or the two bodies in contact so in fact it is directly proportional to the normal reaction between them and if l is equal to mu s n so if n is changing then the value of limiting friction will change second thing is that the limiting friction of of the static friction the limiting value of the static friction f s is independent of the area of contact and varies with the normal force so if you see that the value of fl is directly proportional to n and it is independent to the area of contact so whenever i place a big object having the mass m and one small object having the mass m so as mass of both objects are same so the normal reaction of both object will be equal to mg here and in this case the value of the limiting value of frictional force is the equal to mu s n if the coefficient of friction of this surface is equal to mu s so clearly the frictional force the limiting value of frictional force is independent of the area uh, of contact now we have coefficient of static friction so as we have learned about the static friction you have observed the term mu, mu s in the static friction formula so mu s is basically the coefficient of static friction 
it it shows that whatever the surface is rough or it's a smooth so for a rough surface the the value of coefficient of a static friction will be more and uh, correspondingly in order to move the object on that surface you need to apply more force that the value of frictional force is equal to mu s into n in case of a static friction so mu s can be denoted by f by n so clearly it is the ratio of value of limiting friction and the normal reaction it is basically our limiting friction with dimensionless qu uh, quantity whose value lies between 0 to 1 so one denotes the maximum friction uh, maximum value of coefficient of a static friction and it it denotes a very rough surface while zero denotes a very polished surface or uh, it has a zero frictional force like if i put the value of mu s is equal to zero then we get the value of limiting friction is equal to zero it means it denotes uh, it denotes a very smooth polished surface so clearly the the value of mu depends on the material and the nature of surfaces in contact that is whether uh, they are dry or wet rough or smooth polished or non polished the value of mu does not depend upon the area of contact 